Okay, Lynn. Next question, Lynn. Top takeaways is what this was, I guess, from the full three hour. Uh, oh no, top takeaways, I guess, was the, is one video called Top Takeaways. So she asks, is it advisable to stop taking any of these nourishing herbal infusions prior to surgery? And I would say um, not necessarily. I would say that they could actually be really beneficial leading up to surgery because you're you know, building your body, just like in physical therapy, they say, you know, you can do the physical therapy up to surgery and you're still going to be in better shape than if you didn't do the physical therapy before surgery, you know, in, in your recovery time and after surgery. And I think that these herbs are also great for after surgery as well. And they all have benefits in ways that they can help you. I would say that the herb that a lot of people would say, wait, Red clover, you can't do that before surgery because it has coumarins in it and it has, you know, blood thinning potential. And they don't want you to have blood thinners before surgery. So that one is possible. Although in the red clover video, um, I cited um, a book about drug, herb drug interactions and safety and whatnot. And it basically says that in red clover, there's five different coumarins types of coumarins, and they have different actions on the body. One actually might thin the butt blood. The other one might um, have the opposite effect on the blood. And then a couple, and then some of the other coumarins have no effect on the blood. So this is where when we consume the herb in whole form, like in the nourishing herbal infusions, and we expose ourselves to the vast array of constituents within that herb, we get way more modulation and normalization in, in their effects because again, they're not drugs. So our paradigm is like, we're so used to this concept of drugs, like having a one specific direction of action. Like you take a drug, um, and it's going to thin your blood no matter what, whether your blood's already too thin or it's not thin enough, no matter what, it's just going to thin your blood. With herbs, herbs don't necessarily have one direction of action. In fact, they can often go, a lot of herbs have this amphoteric effect where they could go one way or they could go the other way. And in my mind, and I don't know if this is scientifically true or not, but we're basically providing our body with a vast array of chemistry that it can pick and choose from. And our inherent innate wisdom that our body has in knowing, you know, like, oh, like this constituent would be really helpful for me now. So this is the one that I'm going to work with and, and um, make use of. And these other ones can, can, you know, we can metabolize them, we can store them for later, we can excrete them, whatever. So um, there is some trust in the inherent wisdom of nature in, in that mindset, but I'm okay with that. Another way that we can think about these main herbal infusions in any time when we're thinking about um, combining them with a medical procedure or drugs or whatnot is we can compare them to the foods that are very similar to these herbs or that have um, actions that <clears throat> would even be more powerful than these herbs, more potent, let's say, than these herbs. So in the case of red clover, you could ask your daughter, your doctor, would it be okay if I had beans before surgery? Because they're both in the legume family. Beans can be a lot harder on the system, dried beans, say like black beans or soybeans or something, can be a lot harder to digest and a lot harder to break down and a lot harder to deal with on our system than red clover blossoms, because this is like the flower of a bean plant, essentially. Stinging nettle, you could say, can I eat spinach? And in some ways, spinach is gonna be more harmful to the body because it has oxalates in it than stinging nettle would be. Um, can I drink chamomile tea? And that would be in comparison to linden, both anti-inflammatory, but chamomile tends to be stronger in effect, more sedating, um, and 
you know, people can be more likely to have allergies to chamomile. So I feel like chamomile is like a stronger herb, but in the same sort of vein as linden blossom. And then with oat straw, uh, you could ask your doctor, can I eat oatmeal before my surgery? And that would be comparable to the oat straw itself. It's the same plant. It's just different parts of the same plant. So thank you for your question, Lynn. I hope that that clarifies to some degree.